What is up, guys? It's Josh here with the Prods Productions back in Unreal Engine 4. We're starting off a new UE4 tutorial series today, Unreal Engine 4 Projects. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the many things we've learned, materials and blueprints and particle systems and audio and blah, 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 and we're going to put it all together and we're going to learn some really awesome, more exciting stuff. We're going to have to jump into Blender and Pro Tools every once in a while, maybe. We'll see what happens. But the point is, let's get started today with the first one. And we're going to create an audio spectrum analyzer. And if you don't know what I mean, I mean literally a lit an audio spectrum analyzer, okay? Basically, you see the DJs have little things. It's, it's analyzing the frequencies and making them bounce around. We're going to create one of those today. But we need something from UE4 before we can do it. And I'm going to walk you through that right now. So what we need to do is we need to turn a plugin on that's built into the engine. So go up here to this edit tab right here and drop on down to on plugins tab right here. Now, there's all kind of plugins. We can go on for days. We haven't even touched these. We're going to go to audio. Okay, we're going to scroll on down. You're going to see Sound Visualations Plugin. Now, I've got it enabled, okay? Now, that means all I can do is close it. But if you enable this, it's going to make you, or it's going to tell you before it, can, before it will work, you need to restart your project. So please restart your project and then jump back in here with me. All right, bada bing. Now that you've jumped back into your project after restarting it, let's get started. Now, I got the DP folder. You better get one if you ain't made one. All I've got inside, though, and this is all we're going to start with, is I've got a track here, a little demo, deprived. You know what I'm talking about? A little jam, huh? You're getting nasty with it, son. But the point is we're going to use that audio as our audio we need for the frequency analyzer. So let's get started. So what we're going to need is a few materials. Now, you could use one, but the reason we need a few materials is because we want different colors based off the height of the frequency. If it's really loud, it's red. If it's kind of quiet, it's yellow or, or green. But if it's in the middle, it's yellow. So we're going to create these right now. I'm going to create a material, and we're going to name it S-A underscore green. Because, you know, green's kind of like the, 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 uh, the, the lower end, like the, the it's all good kind of collar, you know what I mean? Like when it comes to a spectrum analyzer, yellow, it's getting kind of hot. Red, it's getting too hot. But here we go. Go down to unlit because all this is going to be literally is a collar. That's it. So hold the number three, not the number four. Hold the number three and plug it into a missive collar and we'll just make it a really bright green and boom, we're done. You know what I'm talking about? We got this green collar. We'll save it. We'll close the window and we're back out here with our green collar. So what we can do now is just right click, double click. Or, sorry, right click duplicate. I want you to actually name this one SA green underscore dark. I'll just name it dark. And what we're actually doing there is if it gets really low, I want the light to not even be on. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take just what we have here in this dark. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold the letter M and get us a multiply, bruh. Okay, plug it in there. Plug this in right about here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to take this and multiply it by 0 0.02. Okay, so what it is now is a really dull green. And that's basically... If, like I said, if there's no audio going on in that frequency, we should just kind of deaden it out, right? Okay, let's keep going, right? We got the we got the green, we got the we got the green, and then we're gonna double right click the green one more time, double click, and we'll make a we'll make a let's see, we need an S A, and we'll name it yellow. This will be our yellow collar. You know what I'm talking about? Now, again, you could make one material and have them have one have one parameter do a few things, but I'm just doing this to kind of keep it a, a little more a little more organized. Now the thing is, I will um t I'm gonna I'll make this yellow. We're gonna make a yellow collar. You know what I'm talking about? We got Got the yellow now. That's the second one. And of course, we need one more, right? We need the red. Okay. I'll just right click one more time and duplicate. And I'm going to name it. I'm going to name it SA underscore red, all capitals for whatever reason. I decided to do that. It doesn't matter. The point is, it's red. And we'll go here and we'll make it a red collar. Make it, uh, make sure it's real red right here, like real crimson red. Yes. So basically, now we've got our different collars to, to, to help ourselves decide exactly how powerful you know that that way instead of it just being lines bouncing around they have collar which tells you not only are they bigger but hey it's louder you know what i'm saying kind of like in a real real spectrum anyway so let's keep moving what we're going to do now is we're going to create a level because all i want is a black background so what we're going to do is we're going to right click right here okay you can actually click on level okay boom i created it now we'll just name it uh i'm just gonna name it SA. And that's what it's called. Boom. That, that's our level. It's called SA. Now, if I double click and open this level, watch what happens. It's going to ask me to save everything we've done, which is fine. And then boom, it's going to open a blank level. Now, you got the grid here. You can see it all flying around. But the point is, if you press G, it's black. There's nothing going on. There's nothing. This, this level is completely blank. And that's exactly what we want. We just want a black background. And we're going to place our spectrum analyzer right here. And we're going to see it work. So yes. Now, the next thing we're going to need is a couple different blueprints. So let's get started on those. So the first blueprint we need is actually just the shape, and what we'll use is a cube, but what we'll do is right click, and we'll go to blueprint. 
and we'll go to actor, and we'll name it S A because we're, we're a spectrum analyzer. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm making all kind of letters. S A underscore B P. So we've got our B P S A. You know what I'm talking about? But all it's literally going to be, and we gotta, we gotta, we could, we could fix all this stuff around if you want. I don't know how you guys have it set up. We all do it differently these days. But the point is, I'm in the viewport. The only thing I actually need, and again, you know, it, it, it depends on how you want to do it. But you could literally go to add component, static mesh, and set it to a cube like we've done before, or you can actually just type in the word cube and you'll see it right here under the components boom and you got yourself a cube now what we want to do though is we actually want to take the take the material we made and go ahead and set it to one now what i'm what, what which one i'm going to use personally is i'm going to take this bright green one because i think personally that is the one that's going to be used more than any of them so there we go we got all these we got all these boxes we got one box actually it's not all kind of them it's just one but what we're going to end up doing is we're going to drag a bunch of them out here so check it out what i want to do is decide how many frequencies i want and each box is going to be a frequency so i've got a box right there okay now the thing is let's let's bring it up where you want it you know what i'm saying now it's locked we got this thing right here this is like your grid just you know decide how if it's grid locked here the way you move your stuff you know what i'm talking about I'll, i have it set to 100 because now if i press alt and drag i've got another box i've got two boxes you can see it adding it over here in the viewport or in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the labels detail browser thing okay telling you how many objects you have in the world we need three we got four and we got five. Now what I'll do is I'll grab all five by holding shift, right? I got five of them and boom, I'm going to drag them over here and I got, and now I got 10. Now I'm going to grab all 10 of them. You know what I'm talking about? Grab all 10 of them and drag them over like this and boom, ta-da. Ho -ho, we got, we got 20 of these bad babies. Now it's obviously just a line and you know, obviously we're going to take these boxes and we're going to make them go up and down. We're going to make them go up and down. You know what I'm saying? They're going to move up and down like a frequency analyzer. And we're going to use different collars based off their heights. But there we go. We got just a, a blank line there. And you could use planes or whatever you want. But the point is, there you go. You got kind of an idea. Okay. The next blueprint is very important. It's going to be the controller that controls this spectrum analyzer blueprint. So let's right click, create another blueprint class, actor. But I'm going to name it SA underscore controller underscore BP. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a, it's a VP, but SA controller. Now, this bad baby is going to end up doing a get all actors of class of these, and that's how it's going to communicate with them. So let's get started. Let's double click on SA controller and jump into it. Now, you know UE4 knows how we do, so it's got us three winders. We got the edit winder. We got the BPSA winder. We got the BPSA controller winder. We're doing winders. You know what I'm talking about? Now, the thing about this, this, um, this, this specific blueprint is that it's only going to need one component as well everything's going to be done in the code but that component is literally just going to be an audio component okay and we'll just name it audio that's fine you can name it music or whatever you want to know we'll just name it audio and we're actually going to leave it blank because we're going to set it inside of the blueprint inside of the event graph so let's get started okay so now that we're in the event graph of the spectrum analyzer controller bp now remember this is the the spectrum analyzer bp that's going to create the lines but this is the sa controller bp and this is where we're going to do the code to make everything work we're inside of the event graph of that remember there's only the audio component. We'll right click and we need that big bad event tick, baby. Because every time, every frame, every frame just keep on happening. We're gonna we're gonna do stuff with it. But here's where we're gonna use the plugin, the sound visualizations plugin. We're gonna type in the word calculate. And you can honestly probably get away with just calc, and you'll see calculate frequency spectrum. And this is what we're gonna be using. Now, it's going to get a little interesting because there's some things we have to do here. It's asking for a sound wave, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to right-click this and promote it to a variable. And I'm just going to name it... I'm going to name it music. That's what we're going to name. We're going to, we got our music variable here. We're going, to, we're going to have the music variable interact with this audio variable. So there you go. Now, this spectrum width is the next thing we need to discuss. This is how many of those frequency bars, basically, we're going to have. We're using 20. If you remember in the world, I created 20 of these. So whatever number that is, we want to set it right here. Boom. Now, the start time and the time length aren't exactly what people think they are. See, for start time, you need to right-click and type in get game time in seconds, okay? So we want it to happen immediately, and we want it to base it off of that time, based off the game time in seconds, okay? Now, the time length is actually how long it takes to retract, how fast the bar is going up and down, and how quickly it does that. Honestly, a weird number for me that works is .095, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, it looks good, but I'll explain that later. But one more thing we have to do is we need to take this out spectrum, which obviously there's a width of 20, so 20 different frequencies, 20 different frequency cuts or ranges that we've created over our 20 blocks here, because that's what we're going to use. We need to right click this and promote it to a variable, which is actually going to be an array of frequencies. So that's exactly what we're going to name it. We're going to double click it and name it frequencies. 
Ta-da! Frequencies! All right, let's keep going. Now, actually, there's one more thing we need to do here. So we've created our music variable, right? And then we created our frequencies array of variables, right? So we have these two, but music actually isn't set to anything yet. If I click on it, you can notice that there's nothing there. So we're going to take our audio track I brought in here. Yes, son. Battle music. Deprived all day or something. I'm going to drag it in there like that. So, boom. That way that's in there and we can, we can, we can compile all that. Okay, so now let's keep going. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump up here and we're going to right click. And what we need now... We need the event begin play, son. That event begin play, we use it all the time. You know what I'm talking about. Okay? Now, this is where we're going to get all of the actors that are out here in the world. So, these are called the SABP, the Spectrum Analyzer underscore Blueprint, right? So, we're going to go in here, and we're going to do a get all actors of class. Okay? We see that right there, and we're going to be able to... Tell, we're going to be able to ask this bad baby what we're looking for. So basically what I can do is I can go back here. I can grab the SABP blueprint, okay? And I can drag it right on there. And nothing happens. So that means I need to just click on the down arrow, press SA, and I'll see SABP. And boom, we've got all the actors of the SABP, Spectrum Analyzer, which are these bad babies right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a for each loop because we need to jump into all of these bad babies. And we're going to do a few things with this for each loop. We're going to do one more thing. Now, we're going to plug this in because we got to have them execution wires. You know what I'm talking about? But we also need this to be a variable. So I'm going to right-click it. Okay, I'm gonna, or actually, yeah, right click this bad baby and also promote it to a variable. Now we can just we can just move that out of the way. Okay, we we really don't need that. I, I'm actually going to delete that. We just need the variable. Now I'll double click down here and I'm going to name it um, F bars. So that's our. Oh no, not F nars. F bars. No. <clears throat> Let's try that one more time. Uh, F bars. Yes. So basically F bars, even though I didn't set it, which is set for frequency bars, by the way, is, is because what it is, is it's a variable type SABP in an array. So it's the same thing, but now we have it as a variable and we can actually compare it to itself. Now, let me explain what's going on there. We have our for each loop, but now we also need a for each loop with break. Okay. Now we're going to plug in the F bars frequency bars into that. These are our bars. And this is basically just these, just like this is. And we're going to compare those. So we're going to loop the body. And while we're searching the location of this one, we're going to compare it to the location of this one. Now check out what I mean. So let's drag a line off of this array element in our first for each loop and type in get actor location. Boom, son. We're going to need the exact same thing here. But before we do that, I want you to, type, to uh, the, drag a line from there and type in the word break. We're going to break the vector, okay? And now all I want you to do is Control-C and Control-V, those two boxes, boom. And we're going to compare it as well. We're taking these two and we're comparing them. Now, the way we're going to do that is we're, the, we're, we're, on, we're moving them left and right on the X axis. Z would be up and down. X is left and right. And Y would be forward and backward. We're moving them left to right. We want to make sure that this bottom one is less than this top one. So I'm going to drag it on here, and I'm going to hold shift and the little S land, uh, uh, less than symbol, right? I'm going to make sure that X is less than this X. And what we're doing is we got our we got our Boolean value. We're asking a question. We can type in branch or just the word if. Boom. Ta-da. Now wait. We haven't got this far yet. We've literally just got we got our we got our we got our locations on the x value. We're comparing the get all actors of class to the f bars variable. Okay, just 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 bear with me here. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll take this loop body over here and go to this branch. We're checking to see if this bad baby's less than that. If it's not, if it's false, we want to break it. Okay, and that will stop the loop, and that's where we can complete. So basically what's happened there is if this condition isn't correct, we'll stop everything. Okay, so here's what we'll do next. We'll make ourselves a little bit of room. We'll, we'll, br we'll bring this down here because we need to drag this bars, this F bars down, the, the frequency bars. I want you to drag a line off here, and I want you to type in the word insert, and you'll see it right here. Now, it's asking for an execution wire, so if it's completed, we're going to insert this index from this for each loop. Did that make, did that, did that make sense? Did, did, did everybody get that? We're going to input this index into that for each loop from the frequency bars. I know that's a little confusing. Okay, I got it. I understand. But that's basically exactly what's going on there. We're inserting into this. We're inserting into the F bars frequency from the for each loop. After it's broken, take that index. And then the last thing we'll do from the insert is to play our sound. So I'm going to drag these bad babies up a little bit. I know there's a mess going on there. We'll drag in the audio now, finally, okay? Now, before we tell it to press play, let's set sound, okay? Set sound, okay? It's asking you what, what, what sound is going to be. We'll plug that in there. We're going to take our music variable. 
And boom, there it is, bad baby. We're using that music variable. It knows to set it to that just in case. Okay, you're just you're just double checking at this point, and then we can actually drag a line from that audio, baby, and press the word play. And boom, I'd like to tell you we're done, but we're not. We're not done. Okay, we're not. But it's 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 coming. Okay, we got we got the entire event event place set up here. We're comparing both of these to make sure that it's drawing the frequencies on the correct bars, and then storing all these into the frequency bars so we can interact with frequencies here in just a second via the event tick so this is done let's move on actually go to toolbar if you don't have it set up though this is how i like it bro okay i like it the way i like it make sure you compile and let's scroll down and keep going so here's what we're going to do bro we're going to get these f bars we're going to get them frequency bars we're going to get them and we're going to run another another for each loop okay we're going to run another one right after we we did our frequencies here remember we're back in the event event gra or no, the event tick here where we're calculating the frequency setting frequencies and now we'll be doing the for each loop against the bars and what we're going to be doing with every array element is i want you to drag a line from this and type in set actor oh no 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 set actor world scale 3d boom there it is or set actor scale 3d i apologize there it is and boom now let's make sure we plug in our loop body here and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate out of these bad babies how we want the size of our bar to be affected right set world scale we want it to jump up and down on the z so let's calculate that so what we need to do is obviously we're only going to affect the Z. So let's drag a line right off here and let's uh, make a vector, okay? So that way we can only affect the Z and that way the X and the Y will not be affected by this, okay? So what we'll do now is we're going to we're going to drag a line from the array index here of our F bars, our frequency bars. We're going to type in the word get, okay? And we're going to get what? We're going to get a frequency. Oh, oh, oh we're going to get that frequency, bro. And then we're going to plug it straight into Z, okay? And that's it. That's it. Now it's going to be a little wonky. Okay, it's going to be a little wonky, but just double check with me. Let's just check. We're going to save it. We're going to jump out here and check it out real quick. Okay, so we're back out here. I got the, I got everything set. I got the bar set up. But what we got to do is we got to grab the SA controller BP and drag it into the world, right? We got to, we got to be able to have that bad baby in there. It's got to be in the world because it's going to make these bad babies function. And I'm going to Alt P and let's see what happens. I'll tell you exactly what's wrong. We got some audio, but check it out. If you go back in here, we set these to X, X and Y to zero. And that's a that's a no-no. The make vector at least has to be one. The frequency, obviously, we're getting the frequency from the frequency bars and setting it to the Z. But compile that and go back out here and let's watch this bad baby work now. F11 full screen. And by the way, one more thing. If you're having any issues, you know, because you don't have a character set up, you want to go right here to the, to the arrow here, okay? I'm going to scroll down to simulate. That way it's not trying to play the game. That way it'll just play what's happening and you can you can fly around and check it out. Just, just keep that in mind. Just go to simulate. You can F11 Alt P and check it. Yeah, it's 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 huge. Okay, it's 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 huge. But we're gonna fix that. Okay, that that that's the beginning there. Okay, let's jump back into it. Okay, so back in here, there's actually two things we need to do. If we go to the frequencies where we got one and set it to the Z, the Z is way too much. So first thing we need to do is if you drag a line off there and find the old divide button, you can you can do a float divided by float, and we're gonna divide it by the number ten. Okay, now I'm gonna plug that in there. Okay, we're gonna do that now, and just real quick, we're gonna double check it. F11 Alt P. <laughs> Now, you're probably thinking, that's pretty awesome, but I can immediately see a mistake. The low frequencies are cut out in the music there, and they're still pile driving. I'll tell you exactly what's going on there is we're not making up for the fact that negative values may be happening, and it's causing those negative values to spike. So we need to do one more thing. We need to clamp this value here, okay? Let's clamp. You can clamp, okay? Whatever, that, you just clamp it. Okay, don't be afraid to clamp it. We're going to plug this in here. We're going to clamp it from zero. That way it's always, you know, it can't go any lower than the bottom, the flat, flat. But the point is the max could be literally any high number. We'll just set it to 5,000 because it's never, ever going to reach even close to 5,000. We're just clamping it, just zero to a big number. And now if we watch it, we should zoom up on a little bit here, bruh. Press the old G button. We got a little bar here. And if I press the old all P... Oh, 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 son. Okay, we got it started. Now, let's do a couple more things, and then I'll show you the way a couple of these, these numbers that we've toyed with, how they will affect your spectrum analyzer. Okay, so back in here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make all these different frequency bars change colors based off of their height, which is based off of the, the, the audio volume of each 
of each frequency right. But what's cool about this is the frequency bar variable, what we have right here, is actually just an array of the SABPs, right? That's all it is. So we have the cube, so we can get the cube itself. So we can, we can, we can, uh, we, well, type that in. We we'll type in get cube. That's exactly what you need. Type in get cube and get it right there. And then what we'll do also is we'll get the actor scale 3D because we set it here, but we actually need to get it so we can base some numbers off of it. So get actor scale 3D. We got them both, but we're going to need to split this bad baby. So right click split the pin because again, we're only worried about the Z axis. Okay, so this is what we need. Okay, so essentially we're going to need three branches to make all of the collars happen the way we want to. But for now, let's just do one so I can show you what it looks like. Grab a little branch, okay? Just drag this into the branch execution. What is the condition? The condition is if this Z is less than a certain value or greater than a certain value, we want something to happen. So let's let's grab the Z and let's shift and let's do this is a great this is a less than, okay? So basically what we'll do here is we'll grab we'll grab the cube and what we'll do is since we have it right here, we're going to this is where we're going to need it. We're going to type in set material Oh yes, we're gonna set that material. We're gonna, in fact, we we'll grab the cube up here because we're gonna be doing all kind of magic with it. We'll bring it up here, but we're gonna set the material two times. Okay, we're gonna set it two times for now. That's it. Now what we're gonna do is there's there's our there's our condition, and one of these is gonna be true, and one of these is gonna be false. So basically, what's going on here? Well, basically, let's look at it right now. It's saying if the z is less than, let's say if it's less than two, let's say if it's less than two. It'll be a different color. So we'll go we'll go over here. Let's let's just make sure we're grabbing the white runs. Okay, so we got the green one. This is the one we use all the time. It's selected. If it's less than two, if it's less than two, that's true. Let's make sure it's set to our normal green one, right? But if it's greater than two, let's set it to yellow. Let's set it to yellow right here. Okay. That's all we're doing. And then we're just gonna we're just gonna toolbar, compile, and save that. And we're gonna go out here and see if it works. Check it out. All day, every day. <laughs> I mean, we can tell right now, baby, it's working. But let's go ahead and jump in and, ex and set it up the way we want it set up to look a little bit better. Okay, so let's unplug a couple things here and just kind of kind of backtrack those movies out of the way. We're going to need all these, okay? And we're going to need all these, all this kind of stuff. But what we're going to need, again, is three branches. I'm unplugging everything. I'm unplugging everything. I'm just creating three branches here, okay? We got some trues and falses. We got some more trues and falses. So basically, if it's true, I want you to do something, but it's false, I want you to go here. And if that's true, I want you to do something else. But if it's not, I want you to go down here. And if that's true, I want you to do something else. Now, basically, obviously, we can probably all tell that we're going to need four, a total of four of these bad babies because we created four materials. I'm just going to connect my blue lines here and based off different things, okay, based off different things, we'll set things to be different things. So I'll, I'll have this one be this and I'll have this one be this, okay? We're just plugging things up right now pretty much. And again, then we'll we'll, dis we'll discuss what exactly these materials are going to be. We may change those and of course these values. So there's the setup we need. Now let's code it in. So the first question is, is this less than, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say is less than 0.2. That's the first question we're asking. Is it less than 0.2, which means it's almost not on. And what I want to do, what I want to compile them because I'm scared. I'm going to grab this dark green one we created. Okay, I'm going to grab the dark green and I'm going to set it to be there. That is what that's going to be. The first question is, is it less than 0.2? Well, if it is, make it dark green. Now, that we're going to ask a couple more questions. We want to check now. Let's do a... Uh, Let's do a greater than, okay? Let's do a greater than. And basically what we'll say here is if you're greater than two, here's our second question. Here's our second question. Now, if you're, if you're not less than 0.2, let's keep going. But if you're greater than two, I want you to be that yellow. And look, it's already set to it. If it's greater than two, I want you to be yellow, okay? That's what, that's what we want to do. But here's the thing. If it's false, if it's false, I want it to be another color. I want it, I want it to be green, okay? But we have one little problem. And the reason we have a problem is because if this is yellow, what if I want a red one that's even higher? It's going to make sure it's false before it checks my next branch. So check out exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to unplug these. And where I'm, actually, where I'm checking to see if it's greater than 0.2, I'm going to say if it's false, if it's false, I want you to set it to the green one. Now, now think about what I did there. I know that may look a little complicated, but I'm basically checking now to see if it's less than 0.2. What's well, going to be dark green? Is it greater than 2 then? Because we know that it's not less than 0.2. We already know that. If, is it greater than 0.2? It's it, 2? It's not. So basically, if it's greater than 2, this one is where I'll check to see if it's going to be yellow or red. We know it's at least 2. So let's copy and paste that greater than. Plug this in and set this to about eh, 3.5 as we'll set it to, okay? So basically now what we're saying is if this one is greater than 3.5 here, this top one, we're going to make it red. That means it's, it's too much, bro. It's too much. But if it's not, 
That means it's between 2 and 3.5, and it'll be yellow. So we got the dark green. We got the green. We got the red. We got the yellow. We got them all set up here. We got them all hooked to the, hooked to the cube. We got our branches, and there's our little system. Now we're going to compile and save it, and we're going to jump back out here, and let's rock this baby out and see if it works. Get ready. Pretty cool, right? It's kind of working. I'm going to show you a couple things we can do with it. It's freaking sweet, though. It's definitely affected by the music. You can see the bass response at the bottom. The high ones are red. It's a little too much high end in this track. Obviously, we can tell right here. You know what I'm talking about? But we are jamming because we are not scared. You know, no, you can't, you can't be scared. You just got to just keep getting heavy with it. Now, we're going to go. I want to change a couple things here and just explain to you what's going on since we're already deep into this. I'm going to change this time length to literally 0.5, okay? And we're going to watch this again. So check out the difference here. Pretty interesting, right? That's pretty cool, right? It's still neat, but here's what we could also do. Let me just make sure everything's cool. Yeah, we could go down this. And again, it was set to 0 0.095. What if I set to 0 0.03? Super fast. Like I'm talking super fast. <laughs> Oh, if you want it to be all crazy looking like that. Again, now you can see why I kind of like the .095. Again, I think it's a pretty smooth transition here. Yes, son. Now, there's a couple other things you can do, but you want to be careful with them. I'm going to show you those right now. Now, essentially, what you could do when you're setting the world scale 3D of your vector of your frequency bar, what you could do is if you wanted them to pop out a little bit more and act a little crazy, you could square them. But you got to be careful because Unreal doesn't really like it. So this Z axis, after I clamp it and I divide it and we, we got the number one, because again, if I didn't divide it, the bars were huge. But let's still, I still want them to pop out pretty crazy. Well, what you could do is you could drag this value here and type in the word square. And you could square this value, okay, and then plug that into Z. And that's just kind of something I'm showing. You, okay, we're gonna all, all we're gonna F11 Alt P blah 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 full screen. They're a little bouncier, you know what I'm talking about? But there's one little issue you may find with that. And again, you need to maybe reset your values here. You could set all these to variables if you want to have a min, max, red, yellow. You could set variables, or variables however you want to do it. But the point is, the problem here is, sometimes Unreal can't figure out if this is an actual number and it'll fight with you and give you warnings. So sometimes I would literally go here and type in the word normalize axis and plug that in there, you know what I'm saying? And then maybe instead of dividing this by 10, divide it by 20, or not, not 200, my God. Set that, and then it, you begin it look like this. Boom, there you go. So again, I'm not getting any warnings and that's cool, but this part is completely up to you. Again, I'm comfortable with just setting it to 10 and getting rid of this, but I kind of like the look of this too, so we'll keep it there. But yeah, we're going to rock it one more time, guys. I hope you learned a little something. Our first UE4 project tutorial is a success, like always, I hope not. But the point is, we got a spectrum analyzer here on a black world. We used our own materials, our own stuff, and we're just rocking this deprived track right here. It's called Battle Music, but all it is is just a little demo we put together. You guys can at any point in time, boom, link link right there on the screen. There is our SoundCloud. You can listen to tons of free music. Download some royalty free music to put into your tracks or into your games, into your films, into your commercials, into, into your presence for your mom, for your wife. I don't care. Or you can buy our EP. You know what I'm talking about? We got some music. But yeah, feel free to check that out. But until then, we're going to jam this one more time. This thing is freaking sweet. <laughs> Guys, I appreciate you watching. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel, Deprived Productions. Hit us up. Hit up Deprived on SoundCloud, Bandcamp. Hit up Deprived Productions on Facebook. We love you. We miss you. We want to be on you. Peace. <laughs>